The Omega Navigation System is a worldwide all-weather navigational system providing a fixed accuracy of one to two nautical miles, which can be used by submarines and the aircraft, as well as surface ships. Like Loran, it's a radio navigation system. However, Omega uses VLF, very low-frequency radio signals, which permit extremely long-range navigation, consequently reducing the number of stations required to provide a worldwide navigation system. Another important feature of the Omega system is the simplicity of its equipment, which makes it very easy to operate and maintain once you understand a few fundamentals. To provide worldwide coverage, the Omega system will use eight VLF transmitting stations. One in Norway, another in Trinidad, one in Hawaii, and another in north-central United States. Of the remaining, one is in the Indian Ocean, another in the southern part of South America, one in the Tasman Sea area, and finally, one in the western Pacific. The actual spatial relationship of these stations to each other may be better understood by viewing them on this globe. The stations are spaced so that any position on the globe will receive usable signals from at least five stations. Each of the stations is assigned a letter designation, A through H, and each transmits continuous wave VLF signals in the 10 to 14 kilohertz band. The signal format is transmitted once every 10 seconds, with each station transmitting in turn for approximately one second, and with all transmissions synchronized to a common standard time. Actually, there's a very slight difference in the duration of each station's transmission. For example, station A transmits 10.2 kilohertz for nine-tenths of a second, station B for 1.0 seconds, station C for 1.1 seconds, station D for 1.2 seconds. The same transmission periods are repeated for the other four stations and simply rearranged in order. There is a two-tenth second separation between signals. The difference in transmission duration and position can be used to identify the different stations. However, since the closest stations will usually have the strongest signal, they are identified by their signal strength. But no matter what method of identification is used, the important point to remember at this stage is that the transmitters are sending out signals in a time-shared sequence, and that every Omega receiver is picking up signals from a number of transmitters. These receivers are not only receiving the signals, but they're also comparing them to determine the phase difference between them. To explain phase difference, we'll use sine waves to represent the signals being received. As long as these waves coincide, we can say that they're in phase, or that they have a zero phase difference. But as the relationship between the waves begins to change, a phase difference begins to appear. Now, let's visualize the relationship between a receiver and two stations, with a baseline drawn between the two stations. At a point midway between the stations, there's no... ...because they have traveled the same distance. And as long as the receiver remains on a line equidistant from both stations, the phase difference remains zero. This series of zero phase points establishes a line of position for the receiver. As the receiver begins moving toward one station and away from the other, we begin to get a phase difference due to the difference in distance the signals travel. In our simplified receiver, you can see this phase difference being measured. The sine waves simply show the changing phase difference graphically. As the receiver moves away from the midway line of position, also called a zero phase contour line, the phase difference gradually increases from zero through 360 degrees or back to zero, thus locating another zero phase contour line. Now, if we were to draw a new line of position at each zero phase difference interval, we would get a series of zero-phase contour lines dividing the area between the two stations into lanes. These zero-phase lines appear at half-wavelength intervals, 
And so, for 10.2 kilohertz, which is the basic frequency of the Omega system, this gives us lanes that are eight miles wide near the baseline between stations. For all practical purposes, the lines are parallel near the baseline, even though they are hyperbolic and actually diverge as they move away from the baseline. The distance between the stations is so great, however, the divergence seldom becomes significant. For identification purposes, the lanes between each pair of stations are numbered. This is done by assigning the number 900 to the midway, or zero contour line, between the two stations. On one side of this line, moving towards station A, the lines are numbered in decreasing order. On the other side of the 900 line, moving towards station B, the line numbers increase. The same arrangement is followed in numbering the lanes between any pair of stations, with the numbers always increasing from the lower to the higher letters. In the Omega system, these lane numbers are always used to determine the ship's line of position, and these are the numbers that the lane counters of the Omega receiver use to identify a particular lane. On this AN-SRN-12 receiver, the lane count is indicated by the three digits in the window at the left. Omega receivers also give a percent of lane reading, which permits an LOP to be established within a lane with greater accuracy. Percent of lane is obtained by treating each lane as though it were divided into 100 equal parts. For practical purposes, the percent of lane measurement is used as the measure of phase difference. On the SRN-12, percent of lane is indicated by the two digits on the right, 